What is resistance? Resistance is the opposition to the flow of charge, and resistance is measured in ohms. And the symbol for ohms is omega. Also, the circuit symbol for a resistor uh, is a rectangular box with two wires coming out of it. So how do you calculate resistance? Well, voltage uh, is equal to the current times resistance and we end up with the formula uh, V equals I times by R. So to work out resistance, do V divided by I, the current going through a, capac uh, through a conductor, will give you R. The triangle here, if you want to find resistance, voltage divided by the current. If you're looking for the current, voltage divided by the resistance. And if you're looking for the voltage, it's the current times by the resistance. If you're wondering why, the, why is the symbol for current I, it actually comes from the French for intensity of the current. That's why it's an I, not a C as you might be thinking. Now, one thing you need to be aware of for your exam is an experiment to be able to determine resistance. Now, the, the uh, equipment that you'll need, you'll need a power supply, so this provides uh, electrical energy to your circuit. You need a variable resistor, and the reason you need a variable resistor is so you can vary the amount of uh, voltage across the, your test resistor here. Then you've got an ammeter, and the ammeter you're going to use to measure the current, and note it's in line, it's in series with your circuit here. Whereas the voltmeter, that's measuring the voltage across your uh, test resistor, or if it was a bulb, you'd put a bulb here, or if it was a piece of wire you wanted to measure, you'd put it across here. So power supply, uh, variable resistor, uh, there's an ammeter, and then you've got your voltmeter across. Now what do you do with the information that you get? Well, you vary the variable resistor, and what's going to happen is slowly the voltage across here will increase, so the voltage across here will increase, and you're going to see as the voltage increases, the current is also going to increase. And when you, when you plot a graph of this data, you find that the gradient of the graph, so the line here, the gradient of the graph is equal to 1 over R. So in an exam, if you find out what the gradient is, divide the gradient uh, by 1, and then that will tell you what the resistance uh, of this resistor here is. So how does resistance vary in different wires? Well, the longer the wire, the greater the resistance. And the reason why the longer the wire, the greater resistance, so for instance, this wire here would actually have more resistance than this wire here, is because as the electrons are going through, they might bump into uh, atoms, and the longer the wire, the more chance they have of bump bumping into atoms, and therefore their resistance would it'd be tougher to go down this wire than it would to go through this wire. And Another way you can change the resistance of a wire is the thinner the wire, the greater the resistance. So we've got this wire here and this wire here. This wire here would actually have more resistance than the, the, uh, air, the, the wire with the larger area. And the reason why is if you think of like a highway, with a larger area, there's more room for the electrons to flow, whereas here with a smaller area, uh, the electrons are kind of, it's as if they're being forced to go down like a single dirt track road, whereas here there's a nice big long highway. It's easy to get, well, if it was a motorway or a highway, it'd be easy to get more cars to go down, whereas here uh, it's easy to get more electrons to go down. So therefore the, the resistance of the large area is actually much, much less than the resistance with the smaller area. Okay, resistors in series. So here you can see we've got two resistors. So as the electricity goes through, firstly the electricity has to go through one resistor, then it has to go through the second resistor. So the equation to work out the total resistance is you just add the resistances up. So let's do an example. Uh, imagine if we had a 20 ohm resistor and a 30 ohm resistor. Well, our total would be equal to 20 plus 30, which is 50 ohms. Nice and simple. Now things get a little bit more complicated when we're talking about resistors in parallel. Now this is the formula for resistors in parallel. 1 over RT 
is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And the, the unusual thing is, is that the electrons can actually go through two different paths. So it's a bit like if you've got a large crowd uh, in a room and they're all trying to get out, but there's actually two doors that they can leave, the resistance actually becomes uh, lower. So it's actually much easier for the electrons to go either through the, the top resistor R1 or the little bottom resistor uh, R2. So let's imagine uh, in an example that R1 is equal to 100 ohms and R2 is equal to 200 ohms. So let's apply our equation. Well, 1 over RT is equal to 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200, which is equal to 2 over 200 plus 1 over 200. Uh, add these all up together and we get two, uh, whoops, sorry, 3 over 200. So RT is equal to 200 divided by 3, which gives the final answer of uh, 66.7 ohms. So you can actually see the resistance is even less than the lowest resistor here. So the total resistance when I've got uh, 100 uh, ohms and I've got 200 ohm resistor, you put them together, you actually get a resistance that's even low, lower than the lowest resistor that's there.